Good morning, everybody. Wherever you are, and whether you're watching live or on catch up, a Merry Christmas from all of us at the sanctuary to all of you out there. I should also say Feliz Navidad and Happy Holidays and many, many other forms of Merry Christmas. Remember our motto over this time when people think about a lot of things in this difficult year. Wherever you are, we are here for you. Welcome to today's Healing Minute from the virtual Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. I'm John speaking to you from Hillingdon, West London. And I need to warn you that if you hear a loud noise, please ignore it, as we are on the flight path of North Old Airport. The music you're listening to is by Aeolia, and the CD is Angel Love and the track Celestial Sanctity. Thank you for joining us for the Healing Minute today. This session includes an opportunity for each of us to send healing to the people and animals we know are in need. My reading after the Healing Minute, as you might have guessed from the photograph, is about the wonderful Maurice Barbonell and of course his guide, Silver Birch. And the finishing music is by a wonderful American guitarist by the name of Bill Withers. And it's a song that was on the Royal Variety performance this week, and one I've always loved. But I'm going to turn the music down now as we begin to prepare for the healing minute. In preparation for the Healing Minute, please close your eyes, if it's safe to do so. In your mind, take yourself off to your own personal sanctuary. Somewhere that you feel perfectly safe, totally at ease and completely peaceful. Take a deep breath and inhale the healing energy and allow it to flow through your body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. As you breathe out, let go of all your personal stresses and any dis-ease in your life. Now let us attune, as Harry always used to do before he did distant healing. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As our crown chakra opens, we visualise a column of pure white light filling our body. Then feel the balance and harmony within our body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of our feet and our base chakra. We feel our connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. Today I'd like to read the sanctuary prayer to you. Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to the good influencing of your healing ministers in spirit, that through your divine healing power, the disharmonies within me might be overcome and the stresses of mind and body be eased and lessened day by day. Help me to adopt a more positive and helpful way of thought. Bring me into closer harmony with those around me and with the divine healing purpose. And for those who are sick or in the darkness of despair, who do not know of the help that can reach them from spirit, I pray that awareness will come to them soon, that they too might experience the upliftment of spirit that can lead us all through harmony towards true health. May God bless you. Amen. Let's read Touched by Angels, which I know is favoured by my dear friends Tracy and Aaron. <clears throat> We are touched by angels 
and walk where angels tread. They will guide us, walk beside us through the days ahead. In the hours of darkness, when our dreams have flown, they bring hope and gentle healing. We are not alone. In our times of doubting, still they understand and forget forever touched by angels we walk hand in hand the great invocation which of course is an invitation for all of us to link our minds and the healing energies for the benefit of all from the point of light within the mind of god let light stream forth into human minds let light descend on earth from the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the centre where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the centre which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Let's move into the healing minute. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for their highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends and the people who have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Let us pause for a moment. And send out those healing thoughts. Thank you. Our thanks and blessings for your help here today and of course to our friends in spirit. For today's little reading I want to talk about a great pioneer of spiritualism. But firstly a caveat this is I'm going to read an article which I found on the internet on the website of Psychic News. I don't know when it was written uh, and I don't know by whom it was written but um, I want to thank them for this insight. It's quite interesting before I start the article how many connections there are between spiritualism and the area in London known as Fleet Street which is where uh, all the major newspapers used to be published uh, and the people around the publishing and journalistic industries who became deeply involved in spiritualism. For those who are not UK residents, in London many trades, indeed professions, used to gather geographically at certain roads or areas close to their fellow artisans. And Fleet Street 
became the centre of the newspaper and printing industries. It was named after the adjacent River Fleet and was formed around many coffee houses where folk would gather to seek news of the day after censorship legislation was lifted in the year 1695. Our founder, Harry Edwards, and that of the NFSH, now named Healing Trust, was an apprentice in print near to Fleet Street, and Ray Branch, his successor, worked in the media and advertising in Fleet Street. But today I want to concentrate on a gentleman who also worked in journalism, and his name is Maurice Barbanel. He was known to his friends as Barbie. He was a man who did more than most to open minds to the spiritual realities that shape our lives, but whose influences are often not recognised or acknowledged. Barbie, as he was affectionately known to all those who knew him, was undoubtedly a modern spiritualist pioneer. What gives his contribution greater significance is that it was not confined to a single activity. He became a publisher, an editor, a compelling speaker, a spiritualist author and also a trance medium through whom a spirit entity known as Silver Birch communicated. The words of wisdom uttered by this highly evolved guide were conveyed with such simplicity and clarity that they touched the hearts and souls of thousands of people. Also, books of his teachings are still in print and available in many languages. Nothing about Barbanel's upbringing even hinted that he would make a name for himself in the world of spiritualism. His father, Manel Barbanel, had married Rivka Groblin in Russian Poland and moved to London around 1899 with their daughter. And he set up in business as a barber also practiced dentistry, an unusual combination it would be in today's world. They had five more children, one of whom, Morris, was born in London's East End on the 3rd of May 1902. His first job involved sweeping up hair and acting as lather boy for his father. In his teens, Barbie became an unpaid secretary of the Ghetto Social and Literary Club in his neighbourhood. And one of his roles, as well as obtaining the services of famous literary and artistic figures, without a fee, was to act as the speaker adversary in order to stimulate a lively discussion. He says, During my secretaryship, some friends invited me to be present at the seance. The first I had ever attended only when it ended did they tell me it was a mock affair, staged for fun. Nevertheless, as a teenager, it produced a subconsciously antagonism, or subconscious antagonism to spiritualism. Like so many young men, I had abandoned orthodox religion, says Barbie. My mother was devoutly religious, my father was an atheist, who steadfastly refused to accompany her to any orthodox Jewish services despite her lament that his absence would shock their friends. He says, or Barbie says, In my youth I heard so many arguments about religion between my parents, in which accidentally my father always won, that I adopted his atheism, which later changed to agnosticism. However, when the club booked a talk on spiritualism by a young man named Henry Sanders, Barbie although antagonistic towards the subject, felt that only those with personal experience could venture any worthwhile opinions. And he expressed that opinion to the meeting. When challenged by the speaker as to whether he was prepared to back his position by undertaking a six-month period of personal investigation of spiritualism, Barbie agreed. He was introduced to a home circle where the medium, a Mrs. Blaustein, was controlled by various entities who spoke through her while she was in a state of trance. He attended, but was not impressed with her performance, but he persevered and returned the following week. 
What happened next was to change the course of his life. He fell asleep, either through boredom or tiredness. At least that's what he thought had happened. But when he returned to a waking state, he apologised to the other circle members. They assured him that apologies were unnecessary. You have been a Red Indian, they explained. Today, of course, the correct description would be a North American Indian. It was my first mediumistic trance, Barbie explains. But what happened was a complete blank to me. Nevertheless, the guide known as Silver Birch had broken formidable earth barriers and spoke a few words in a husky and almost guttural tone. It is far different from what I am assured are the simple but eloquent tones that so many have now heard. In fact, and this was known only to the circle members and guest visitors, the spirit who controlled Barbie gave his name as Big Jump, and that name was always used within that setting. The sequel of that trance event was the formation of Barbie's own home circle, in which the entity gradually developed his control of the medium and his command of English, until it became a seemingly simple process of merging his individuality with mine. Barbie was not keen on trance condition, probably through his curiosity in wanting to know what was said and done through his bodily mechanisms. But news of the spirit guide's words of wisdom eventually reached the ears of a famous journalist, we come back to Fleet Street again, Hannon Swaffer, one of the most influential journalists of the day. Impressed with the results of his own investigation into spiritualism, Swaffer, a natural propagandist, became a high-profile advocate. Indeed, his focus on mediumship after death communications and spiritual development in his regular newspaper columns led him to be described as the Pope of Fleet Street. Barbie came to know Swaffer intimately. Our association began when we spent three years addressing public meetings all over Britain to audiences totalling 250,000 people at weekends. Sometimes there were two or even three meetings on one day. In tandem with his efforts to make people aware of spiritual truths, which included visits to Hyde Park to address crowds at Speaker's Corner, Barbie was establishing a commercial career for himself. But that changed when Swaffer's accountant, Jack Rubens, seeing the thirst for knowledge displayed by the huge attendance at their public meetings, suggested the launch of a spiritualist newspaper, with which he would help financially. Ernest Oton, editor of Two Worlds, was asked if he would bring that publication to London and work with them to enlarge its sphere of influence, but he did not want to leave Lancashire. So Jack Rubin suggested that Barbie, who had no journalist experience whatsoever, should launch a new newspaper. Barbanel was unsure, but that night he was having a regular sitting with a medium named Estelle Roberts as a member of her private direct voice circle and was astonished when her spirit guide, Red Cloud, told him that he had been told what he should do start a spiritualist newspaper. To do that, Red Cloud added, he would have to abandon all his commercial activities and give his earthly life to expounding spiritualism. However much he trusted Red Cloud, it was such a big step that Barbie decided to seek confirmation through a medium who was unknown to him. And so he booked an anonymous sitting with a medium named Kathleen Barkle at her South London home, which provided instant proof. White Hawk, her guide, entranced her and told Barbie that Spirit, the spirit of Lord Northcliffe, a famous newspaper owner in the past, was present. Because of the spiritualist newspaper which my brother Red Cloud had told me about, Barbie did not tell Estelle Roberts about this sitting, yet at the next direct voice circle, Red Cloud asked him, Are you satisfied now 
that you have been to my brother Whitehall? He was then given instructions from both Northcliffe and W.T. Steed, another famous journalist who was also a spiritualist, about the new newspaper's policy, with stress being put on its independence. From their earliest association, long before psychic news was mooted, Red Cloud had called Barbie John the Scribe. Barbie gave the reason for this when he gave his first Arthur Findlay Memorial Lecture at Stansted Hall, Essex in 1973, over 45 years ago. When I, Barbie says, when I asked why I had to embark on this task, Red Cloud said that in a past life I had promised to return to do so. White Hart, 